Hi everybody, this is Zane with Sailing Views. I have Laura Dahman Weitz with me. She is a excellent 470 sailor and I tell you what, I've talked to her a couple times this week already, so without further ado, here she is. So how are you doing, Laura? I'm doing great. Yeah, it's a nice day in Miami. It's sunny. We've been having tons of downpours, so happy to get some sunshine here. Yeah. Um, yeah, all good. Yeah, it's been similar up here. It's been moments of sun, moments of rain, moments of sun, rain. It's back and forth. So anyway, all right, so uh, let's go ahead and jump right into, the, into this. Uh, what age were you when you started sailing, and how did you get started? Give us a, little, sure. a quick rundown. Quick rundown. So I was six when I started sailing, and I my parents put me in an opti and um, on White Bear Lake in Minnesota, and I really did not like sailing alone. And so at age twelve, they um, moved me up to an X boat so I could sail with another person, and that's an inland youth boat. Um, and so it was just a great transition. I could sail with my friends. We had a little like waterproof radio on the boat. Um, and we could just have fun with it. Yeah. And I grew up um, a serious runner and a basketball player and a dancer. And so sailing was really just something I did in the summer and was able to race, but in a like low key, no pressure scenario. And so it wasn't until college that I got really serious about sailing and um, yeah, haven't looked back. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I know in talking with you a couple of times, uh, you were thinking about going to school for track or basketball, and then then you end up getting into sailing. So, you yeah, know, I, I was all set. I had um, my I had a track scholarship. I had my roommate. Like we were deciding who was going to bring buy the fridge, who was going to buy the TV, and I just had this gut feeling that I was making the worst decision, and so uh, changed my mind last minute. There you go. Um, well, what what have you learned from those two sports that transfers over into sailing, especially uh, at the high uh, level? Yeah, a lot. Um, a lot about team, the whole team dynamic, um, especially in basketball. I think respecting your teammates, everything that comes with working together, moving together. Um, yeah, all of that th that came from basketball. The running community is a really special community where um, people just have the most positive attitude and they work insanely hard. Um, we always say that like our sport is your sport's punishment. And so <laughs> like who who runs? I don't know. Right. Um, so <coughs> learned a lot through the running community. Um, and then dance just really has taught me a lot about like balance and coordination and um, a lot of those skills needed for sailing. So I, I took a lot from all of my other sports. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're an amazing athlete. Um, so since you're such a good athlete, who influenced you in sailing that made you decide <laughs> to go further? Yeah. Um, so it was my parents that really, you know, made my life and my career possible. And they've always taken the attitude that, um, you know, do what you love and you'll find success. And they've never once questioned the path that I'm taking and how I'm not making a lot of money. Um, they've just always told me to follow my heart. So they were my biggest influencers. Um, my high school track coach, cross country coach, they've, I still think about them. I still hear their voice in my head. Um, so they really pushed me. And then in the 470, um, it was my college, one of my college coaches, Josh Putnam, that uh, told me I was the right size for the 470. And so he's the reason that I got into the boat. Um, so he's been an influence um, in several different, you know, through five years of in being in the pro sailing scene, I've just met so many amazing people that um, they've all contributed to who I am now. I gotcha. All right. Uh, so when did you think you were good? Or have you figured out if you're good? Or? I think I was good. Um, I think because I'm, you know, the right size to fit into a lot of different programs. I got to see a lot of different programs. Um, I did a lot of, you know, like I'd be in Newport in the summer, Miami in the winter. And so 
a lot of like filling in on different programs before the whole team comes. Um, and so I could kind of see the crossovers and eventually I hit a point where I was like, I know a lot of information and a lot of things that other guys don't know. Um, and so I think like just because of that, just because I have so much experience kind of on training days and I was like, wow, all right, <laughs> I can write a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've learned a lot. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what's your favorite boat and why is it your favorite boat favorite boat is gonna be the e-scow um there's nothing like the a which is amazing but i think just the fast fast moving boat um you sail it on a lake so it's shifty can get really sketchy um and the, the lake i grew up on is like it's shaped like a clover and there's three bays and they're each like a mile long so and it's actually got the largest a fleet um so sometimes you have like 10 12 boats out all on like a one mile course and to sail something with a main that big um and you've got these like the driver has these tiny little rudders so like just the way that the whole crew works um the speed it goes the feeling of sailing at like 30 degree heel it's yeah there's nothing like it that and foiling anything yeah. foiling yeah, I mean, I should say the 470. That is my favorite boat, but yeah. aside from that. <laughs> but you're on that one every day, so any other time, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw a uh, East Gal go across Facebook for sale for like $1,000, and I was like, that might be fun, but I don't need another project. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. One day. So, yeah, one of these days. All right, so in all your travels, uh, what's your favorite place to sail? Favorite place is going to be Columbia River Gorge. Um, I remember the first time I sailed there, it was College Sailing Nationals, and I just felt like this tiny little speck <laughs> in the water. And you look up and you see like the incredible scenery around you, and it's a small town. People are fishing. It's so beautiful. Um, yeah. You have Mount Hood. You have this awesome culture. You have Multnomah Falls. Yeah, there's nothing like it. I love it. Yeah. That it definitely seems super nice. All right, so uh, where do you see sailing going in the future? You know, beyond the uh, not not counting the issues we're having with the pandemic now, but where do you see sailing going? Um, where I want to see it going, and where <laughs> I my heart will always be is in the small little communities that um, keep sailing alive. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of little like lakes in the Midwest, every time I'm always so surprised where when I come back and I sail, you know, a small regatta, you don't know, none of the superstars are there, but you just have the coolest conversations with people. Um, and that whole community feel, I, I love that. And I hope that no matter what you're sailing, how much the boat costs, like how much effort it requires, just, I hope that that remains. Yeah. yeah, you know, I, I consider that the grassroots of sailing, and uh, like you say, I, I'm hoping that that'll make a rebirth with everything going on. But you know, time will tell, and we will see. Yeah, um, totally. All right. So, what's the best regatta or the best trip you've ever had? The best trip. Mm. Well, it's fresh in my mind, and so I'll say the um, it was our pre worlds regatta that we just sailed in February. And uh, Nikki and I had been working really hard on um, our tactical game and just certain communication points in the boat. And we really love sailing in Palma. Um, and so I think we started the first day in like 18th and we finished tied for sixth. And that was a big accomplishment for us because all of the good teams were there is right before Worlds. And um, yeah, it's it was just this feeling of like accomplishment um so we we're both really happy <laughs> yeah i bet all right so let's go uh in the opposite direction what's your worst regatta or worst event uh all right so what's gonna what stands out to me for a negative experience is um i'd say anything in annapolis in the springtime <laughs> nothing against annapolis but i have distinct memories of like college spring regattas or the annapolis nude and just thinking it's going to be warmer than it is and it's freezing cold and it's rainy and 
either breezy or no wind. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I have some bad memories. <laughs> yeah. I've had some uh, serious drift thons in Annapolis. And, you know, when you, when you get that light air drifter and the current, and you're just like, yeah, you can't get anywhere. And you're freezing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> sometimes, it's, sometimes it's not very fun. All right. So, uh, what's the most interesting thing you've seen floating by in the water? Uh, that came in Hong Kong. Um, I was there for the Etchells World, and I wasn't actually sailing. My ex was sailing, and I was there, but I was practicing with the team. And, um, yeah, you just saw, like, I saw a fish swimming upside down. Um, it was, like, totally turned around. The water smelled horrible. I saw shoes, like, every object you could think of. Um, there's just so much bacteria in the water. It was gross. It's like you saw the product of a really nice city that had all of the all the material things, and then it just all got washed out into a race course. Oh, yeah, a lot of fish kills and fun stuff. All right. Yeah. Um, so, what's your best role on a boat? Now, I know on the 470, you know, I'm in the front. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what's your what's your best role on another boat? Um, so my favorite place to be is driving any boat. Um, I will come guest drive for anyone, anytime. I love that. Just getting lost driving boats. Um, I'd say I've had a couple of good experiences, um, in the pit. I think I'm a good multitasker. Um, but yeah, one memory that stands out is sailing Etchells with Steve Hunt and he asked me to come sail. Um, and we were four up and I told him I really didn't want to just sit and hike and call pressure. And so he said, um, all right, come trim the main. And we did, um, we did a two or three day clinic and then, um, the Pacific Coast Championship. And so we won. And, um, the last day of racing, he hit one of his kids didn't sleep that night. And so he was like, all right it's all you today i'm tired like this is all you um and i just always remember that like all right step up to the plate yeah time time to really do your job there's a lot of big dudes in this role and you gotta yeah you gotta show up (laughs) yeah amen to that um all right so uh what's my next question here all right aggressive or conservative (laughs) uh are do you consider yourself aggressive or conservative um I think it's different to describe me and then me sailing with Nikki. So I'll talk about the two of us. We are more aggressive. We take more chances. um, And that's something that we are working on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) By trying to bring it in from taking chances or going out? Yeah, just um, instead of sailing our race against the conditions, we're trying to bring in fleet awareness and play with the fleet more. Yeah. And so... I mean, we both love being aggressive, and um, we'll keep that up, but, yeah, yeah. being you, smarter. Yeah, you know, a 470 is such a kind of a boat speed race. Um, you know, when you, sometimes you can get yourself lost on a boat and just grind out to a corner, and you're just trying to go fast, and you forget about what's going on. And that might be perceived as, you know, aggressive, but sometimes that's just you being conservative and going for speed and not thinking. But, right. you know, sailing, uh, I've been around 470 sailors a lot, and I know that they have to remind themselves, oh, yeah, everybody's going this way. I need to stay in check instead of just getting lost, you know, chasing the speed. So, I don't know. Yeah. You know, Especially when it's breezy, too, and you can't see anything. Yeah. You're just like, ooh, it's fun to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Some of the pictures I've seen on your website where y'all are just jumping waves and having fun, that... <laughs> that reminds me of 470 sailing. All right, so. It blows my mind how so many skippers are like, I can't see anything. And then you're like, okay, you just ducked this boat. I don't know how you did it because you couldn't see, but yeah. I'll hold on tight up here in the front. Yeah. You know, the, the skipper gets a little water hose right to their face. So, yeah, they yep. can't see anything. <laughs> um, all right, so what's the greatest maneuver you've done or been a part of? All right, so we actually have a photo of it. Um, and it happened in Miami this last year. And Nikki and I were really working on uh, downwind communication because I'm flying the kayak, I'm not really looking around. Um, and so 
it was the last race of the regatta and um or of the qualifying series and there was this huge i mean pack of 10 15 boats inside and we were about to go around the mark for the last uh reach into the finish and the way that she she positioned us i think we had a double jibe and then all of a sudden like the pack was still there um and we just had this beautiful maneuver and uh closed the door on everyone um and yeah i keep that photo on my phone and i look at it every once in a while <laughs> yeah a good reminder yeah all right uh so what's your favorite uh, your favorite project you've been involved in or, or program or what have you done that just you know stands out on you know and tells you it can't get any better you know? yeah uh there's three that stand out to me the first one is the um the first pro program i sailed with and that's the bandit the swan 42. um andy fisher was driving his wife melissa is in the pit and um Jenny Holt was on the boat, so I got two females that I got to see how they sailed and how they interacted with this whole like group of bros. And um, they're just, they work hard on the boat. Uh, ben Patrick did an amazing job setting up the boat, and then they go hard at night. And so, um, I mean, we, I've never done so many jello shots than I have <laughs> on that program. Um, so they set the bar so high. And then, um, I moved on to working um, for the White Witch and their whole program, their Shelter Island group. They now have the Prospector. Okay. And um, so I, I was able to work on that boat. Um, and that really taught me a lot about it. Um, you know, they never saw a weakness in me because I was a female. They always put me, I mean, I was like mass girl one regatta. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but I kind of like did everything. they. I, they taught me how to drive the box. Um, so I learned a lot through them. The same thing, they had like a great culture. Um, and then finally sailing with the Flash Gordon. Um, and I just, I always, what stands out to me is they're an amazingly talented group of sailors, but wherever we were around the world, I went to Italy with them a few times. I went to Australia. Um, we always, when I saw everyone else hit the docks and go back to, to work, to their computers, to whatever, like we were always like hiking a mountain or like finding the next adventure, swimming in the blue grotto, like we always found something really interesting to do. Um, and that's like why you sat, why you travel and why you sail with this incredible like group of people. And so, yeah. yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to stray for some of my normal questions here. Now, I know I've asked you some of these questions before, but uh, how how is your Olympic campaign going? I mean, have y'all been working hard, or are y'all on pause, or um, during this time? So, definitely not a pause. Um, we are in a really unique situation where Nikki's active duty in the Coast Guard, so hmm. she's actually been. Um, responding to COVID in Miami. And so she's been working really hard and just got the word that she um, got an extension for the next year to be able to train. Um, so that was huge news for us. Oh yeah. And then Coach Robbie and I have been doing a lot of webinars and weather meetings and you know meetings with the US sailing team and um, I've been hitting the gym really hard. So um, yeah, definitely no sort of pause. And then the active fundraising, yeah. which is always interesting. Yeah, <laughs> especially now, right now. Yeah, how's the fundraising going? Um, I know I did I did a campaign years ago, and it was it it was very difficult to to find money. And you know, my parents funded most of it. I'd come home and work for three or four months and fund it. But doing an Olympic campaign with all the travel and all the things you have to spend money on, it it adds up quickly, especially yeah. with two of you on a four seventy. So, I mean, how's that going? Are you coaching a coach boat? Uh, we yeah. want to get a new boat, all of that. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Um, we're really lucky. We've been very successful so far. Um, we've hit all of our fundraising benchmarks, um, but now we have another year. So it's another, uh, yeah, another chunk, another yeah. phase. Um, so I'm not sure. I, 
I can usually gauge how we're doing if we're going to raise the money we need to. Um, I just don't know how people are going to respond to this time period. And um, yeah. yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. All you'll right. See if you see us uh, out to dinner at night or eating PB and J's, you'll know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that plan. All right, so let's talk about uh, America's Cup. Do you love it? Do you hate it? What are your thoughts on it? I love it. I'm intrigued. Um, I understand, you know, both sides of the argument, but um, I think I kind of got my foot in the door. Um, with American Magic, I was doing a little drone work before they sailed the Congressional Cup. So that was like a very early stage of their campaign um, and was super lucky to be on the boat with Coach James and hear a lot of, um, you know, the, the start of their team. Um, and I love that. Uh, I'm so interested in what goes into a, an America's Cup team, especially one with as many resources as they have. Yeah. So fascinated. Yeah. And how are they going to get that uh, big heavy boat to get up in Foyla? It'll yeah. be interesting to watch. Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're in uh, Pensacola right next door to me. And uh, they've been zipping around practicing all last winter. And they're, I don't know, I saw pictures on Facebook today of them putting the boat on a ship all packed up. And they're heading, going somewhere that can only go yeah. by ship. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so they're off and running. But um, all right. So what? Uh, have, you, have you stopped by at all to see them sail? I, I've I've seen videos and pictures. Uh, I've been too busy busy to actually jump in a motorboat and go watch. But uh, yeah. I've got a friend of mine that lives right on the point there, and he pokes his head out and videos them zipping around the bay. And then you know, it's growing up there and and here because I only live like say forty five minutes away. So I know a lot of people, and they they all post pictures on Facebook or call me up and go, watch this, here they go, zoom and zip right by. and Yeah, so I get a lot of good pictures of it. But, That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, what let's go to the, the next real question, which are what are your future plans? You know, I know uh, you said Nikki's still doing stuff, but she got some time. Uh, do you all have yeah. future plans or what do you all know? What have you got coming up? Well, our immediate future is um, – we're going to stay in Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, she lives here. I live here. Coach Robbie lives here. Um, and we have an amazing backyard. So yeah. the, o the ocean's like Japan. So um, it's really perfect for us. Um, and we, we started our campaign just on this high speed roller coaster, um, trying to fit everything we could into two years. And so now that we've hit pause, um, we've definitely had the time to go back and say, all right, what do we need to work on? So it's a good time for us now to start ticking off those boxes. Yeah. You can kind of have a refresh, you know, your batteries are recharging, you're rethinking, you can focus on things. Um, yeah. So we've you had the time now to develop our, um, like our fitness weaknesses too. So yeah, that all goes into play when you're trying to have long training hours yeah well you know the problem is you're not the only one doing that everyone else is so you know yeah it is good and eh, sometimes bad so what uh yeah so well i mean do y'all have any events coming up or do you know of anything or are you just going to just buckle down and we, practice right now well they tentatively set our worlds for the beginning of october um and they'll make the final call in june all right so so not much longer, and you'll know where you're going to be in a couple months. So. Exactly, yeah, and if those are our final trials or not. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, well, good luck with it. I, I'm, I'm rooting for you. All right, so let, let's keep moving on to uh, some of these other questions. Uh, women yeah. sailing. What do, what's your thoughts on women sailing? What can we do to make it better? I mean, Yeah, I get asked this a lot, and I'm happy about that. Um, I think we... I mean, you look at what females are good at. Um, communication, great feel, good multitaskers. Um, how can that be useful on the boat? So, well, off the boat, communication, I remember I'm always, like whatever program I'm sailing with, I'm always just amazed at the lack of communication. 
<laughs> um, how many times you fly halfway around the world and you don't know if you're getting picked up from the airport, you're supposed to find your way, where the hotel is. Uh, so I found myself like filling in that hole a lot of times, like asking the question that no one asks. Um, as far as feel, I think driving the boat, um, flying the kite, even if you're sailing a bigger boat, like you have someone grind for you. Um, but I discovered that sailing with the Prospector 68 foot boat and um, it was the middle of the night, couldn't, couldn't see much of all of anything. I could barely see the kite and the kite trimmer handed the kite to me. Um, I had someone grinding and I just did what I do in the 470 and they said the boat was like moving so fast and um, that's all feel and I think that's something we have naturally. Um, and then as far as like multitasking, like driving the box or being in the pit. Um, so recognizing that, I think we have a responsibility as females to know what we're good at and what we like to do. But then if you're a team leader, um, calling people out and you know letting them step into that role because maybe they don't have the confidence to say, hey, I want to try driving or something. Mm -hmm. So, All right, well. That's my answer. <laughs> that's your answer. All right. Um, all right, well, I'll just let that one stand, and we'll keep moving on. Um, <laughs> all right, do you have any ideas or thoughts on how we can help grow the sport? Um, I mean, maybe similar to the female question, um, being more open to bringing people on board. Um, this is something that Nikki's always really good at, and I take from her is she'll talk to anyone in the boat park or walking by the, you know on the street and say this is the sport i love this is why i love it come try come look at our boat um and she's really open about stuff like that and i think if everyone has that attitude um you know it'll bring more people on board and yeah just sharing what we love and why we love it yeah i, I think you're definitely right about that just getting being open and sharing with people that you know don't know anything about it and you know where i'm from you know it's a nice water community but you know most of the people here are big into fishing and deep, you know going offshore and catching big fish the sailing yeah. community is pretty small but you know there, there there's a little respect and and camaraderie now if i go a little inland nobody has a clue what sailboats are and and trying to talk to them some people are int interested and some people are like well it is if it's not shooting a deer and putting food on my table i don't care so <laughs> yeah you know i don't know i haven't found the yeah. right i haven't found the way to do it but just well, talking to people yeah, there's always the the media answer too and yeah. i mean yeah. yeah just yeah grabbing a cool video and getting it with getting more visibility i think whoever is good at media should um and in the sport of sailing should help with that yeah so yeah, it would be nice to get more people out there. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, what kind of advice? What kind of advice do you have for new sailors or new couples or new people getting into the sport? Uh, new couples. <laughs> new. I mean, it doesn't have to be couples. I'm just thinking new people. Um. Yeah. I'd say. It, I mean, always ask questions. Um. Put yourself in a know the situation that you're walking into and so um you know i always start with beer can races that's a really relaxed uh atmosphere and usually the sun setting it's pretty everyone's having a beer after the race or whatever and um it gives you this like low-key no pressure environment to look around and be inquisitive um and then i'd say stick around after racing um whether it's for a barbecue or going to the bar, like that's where you learn the most interesting things and meet people and you just never know what's going to come up. So don't be in a hurry to race off after sailing. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, I, I'm a firm believer in keeping everybody there and celebrating and talking and catching back up with people. Um, yeah. You know, lately I've, I've noticed a trend where people, they come in, they have one rum drink and, them and their whole team scatter and you know you don't get to talk to them because you know they have a little group and then they're gone and you never yeah. get to see them at a regatta and i wish 
we could find a better way to keep people around for that. So totally. That's why I love the Viper fleet. I think they're really good at that. Yeah. Yep. Um, we have this guy, Brian Harrison, who's kind of from my area. Um, he, uh, Starthers forgot a kind of like the Sarasota winter series. He got us uh, started in Fort Walton, and every weekend we'd come over. He and his wife Brooke would throw a huge party at their house, which you know just you know walking distance from the yacht club. Maybe crawfish one day, or you know jambalaya, or you know, and everybody's in his backyard. You know, it was great. So, and that's yeah. I think that is a that's a big winner. So. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, do you have anything else to add to any of these questions? Anything else to add? Um, follow our team. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect vision sailing. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. No, I'm, I'm happy you interview me, you interviewed me and um, would love to keep checking in. So thank yeah. you. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'll bring you around for story time. Um, awesome. That's a whole new segment. I'll, I'll run that one through you later. But uh, Okay. Yeah, so everybody, uh, it's Perfect Vision Sailing, correct? Yes. All right. For Look. 2020 Perfect Vision. All right. There. <laughs> That's a good way to remember it. All right. Yeah. Well, everybody, check out her website and uh, support her, her and her uh, skipper. And they definitely uh, are good. They're on track. They need support. You know, the U.S. Sailing, uh, US sailing is great. And being on the U.S. sailing team is awesome, but I can assure you they do not fund them as well as they need. So help these girls out. Help them do what they need to do and get exactly what they need to uh, finish this program off. Get these girls to the Olympics. And with that, we're going to We're going to keep working hard, and we're going to bring home a medal. There you go. All right, so with that, I want to thank Laura and uh, everybody else for watching. And once again, this is Zane from Sailing Views. Hit the like button. Hit, hit the subscribe button. The more subscribers I get, the more of these videos I can do. Plus, you get to see them all. So, with that, that is it. Over, out, awesome. and bye-bye. All right.